What is up, people? Welcome to the live stream. Uh, hope you're doing well. Today we're talking about how to grow on YouTube faster. And I do want to share a few thoughts, especially if you are re-watching this. I want to share a few thoughts with you right now to help you grow on YouTube faster. And then we're also going to get into a Q&A, answering questions related to YouTube growth. And part of that can also be content creation. Um, I know I always say in these beginnings, like, oh, I'll go back through or I'm going to try and go back through and leave chapters. If I do, awesome. If I don't, I'm sorry. Uh, you might just be able to slide around and whenever you see a comment appear on screen, you can kind of let go of the playhead thing and see what the comment is. And if it's relevant to you, it's probably the, the easiest route. Um, we got Evan in here. We have Chris. What's cracking? And we've got uh, Jeanette. Colin, please start the video. I got to start on time. <laughs> that was 6.25 a.m. Someone commented at 6.25 a.m. saying to start the video. Uh, I, I, I'm not up yet. <laughs> I can't start. Um, all right. So let, let me get into a few things with YouTube growth. Um, and this is something I've just been thinking about just based on some of the content I'm getting ready to put out for you guys. Um, so when it comes to YouTube growth, uh, one of the key things I think that's super important to keep in mind here is creating content that's in demand. Um, and I know I've talked about this in previous videos as well, but making figuring out what is actually currently getting views and then making those videos is, is, is so important. And that, that, that can be difficult to do because it, I guess also depends on where your mindset's at too, with content creation too, because some people just want to post videos and have fun with it. And that's totally fine. You can just go post videos, but just don't have the expectation that those videos are going to get views um, versus putting out content that you've previously researched and made sure that there, Hey, there's actually lots of views going to this style of content towards this topic and then doing something similar to that. Um, I think that's a huge shift because I know when I started my channel, uh, when I was under hundred K I did like, I was uploading short films that I made with my smartphone. You can actually go back to my channel and find some of the short films I made with my phone. Uh, one of my favorite ones is head. If you go all the way back through my old videos and find the head video, you'll have a good laugh. It's pretty funny. It's like a horror movie I made with my phone. So I was uploading those on this channel because I was teaching, you know, mobile content creation. So I thought, oh, I'll cover short films and I'll show my short films I make. Um, and then also I'll cover, cover mobile photography and give tips about photography. And oh, I'll talk about this. And why don't I make a video on this? And so I was just all over the place, just putting out content. And it wasn't until I got clear on what value I can provide to viewers. And then also getting clear on before I shoot a video, actually figuring out, is there any interest here? Because I'd put out like one tutorial and, you know, it'd get tons of views and then I'd put out another tutorial and it wouldn't. And the difference was, was one was getting had attention. The other one didn't. Um, so getting very specific on what type of getting, getting very specific in your research and figuring out what actually works, what actually doesn't, what's actually getting views, um, finding those videos where there's more views than the channel has subscribers. Uh, that's ultimately going to lead to faster growth. Um, or answering the common questions that people have in your niche um, is also a really big one that you can kind of cover. Um, or just making like tutorial content related to your niche. That's also really big. Those are people in search looking for that stuff. And I feel like it's a lot easier to start getting views if you do appeal to search versus just trying to get on the homepage. Because uh, the homepage is really competitive. You're competing with every other person they're subscribed to um or just currently watching uh but yeah um we'll get deeper into it let me go over to the chat yo n cage is here what is up sir um you should teach us how to make short films by ourselves <laughs> now that i have the new cap cut the colin michael edits channel uh name might be changing there too but since i do have that channel because it is all currently dedicated to just video editing, 
um, I very well could get into making short films uh, and, and things related to that or doing different like uh, movie effects with cap cut. That could be really fun. Um, so I might go and explore that area eventually. Not on this channel. Uh, this channel has a new focus. And that's also why I made the editing channel too is because I can talk on those more miscellaneous stuff that doesn't necessarily relate to like a proper YouTuber, but could relate to someone who is trying to make like movies with their friends or trying to make like, you know, someone who actually wants to be a filmmaker or a director or something and only has their phone and they want to film stuff with that. Um, and who knows, maybe I'll get into, I'll make another uh, few short films and stuff like that. Um, there's still a bit of a drive to make like a scripted out, like, you know, where there's actually like a plot or a show or a movie. Let me know. Have you guys ever thought about going that route being like a more filmmaker proper route? Um, cause yeah, that, that, I guess that's kind of where I started. I just wanted to talk all things, making videos and stuff like that. And that included short films and things like that. I, let me know if you guys watch short films on YouTube back in the day, like I'm talking like 10 to 15 years ago. Uh, I loved watching short films uh, on YouTube. They had like this cool robot movie where all these robots attacked a town. There's a bunch of great horror shorts that are terrifying that you can find on YouTube. And it's like, man, I'd love to make one of those that like stands out that people love um, and that people will come back to. Who knows? I might actually go back <laughs> sometime tonight and watch some of those old horror shorts that you can find on uh, YouTube. We want the short film. <laughs> it's, I should go and make a, uh, a short film. Uh, I'm subscribed to both your channels. Love your work. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, once I'm done with this cap cut course, in case you guys don't know, I am putting together a cap cut course, to help you go from beginner to pro YouTuber. It'll work with any editor, actually. That's what I'm hoping to do. I'll be editing in cap cut, but hopefully anyone with any software can watch this course and become a better editor. Um, but once I'm done with that, uh, I'm probably going to start making more regular content on the other edits channel. It's just, uh, I know this will be valuable to a lot of people and also valuable to people on the other channel. Um, and that's gonna, and then once that's done, I can, you know, who knows, maybe get into some of that short form content kind of stuff. Um, make a video on how to write scripts. Uh, yeah, I could definitely get into script writing or my process around it. Um, here, let, let, while I'm on stream here, I'm going over to my video ideas in my notes and I'm going to write video on script writing. Um, I've definitely seen some videos more recently on script writing kind of come out. So I know there's people interested in that, not only just you. Um, so yeah, we'll see if I can get something out on the script writing side. Um, <laughs> I had no idea CapCut was this good. Yeah, CapCut is wild, man. Uh, they, they're investing. They invested a ton of money into that software. Um, and the fact that most of it's free is is pretty wild. Um but cool. Hey, if you guys got any YouTube questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Make sure to put a Q before your question and we will hop into those. And also, while I have you all here and while those questions are coming in, um, I want to do a test here. I fixed the music issue. Uh, so last time I was using a software outside of StreamYard to try and get my mic and music playing at the same time. Now I have the music set up inside of StreamYard. Um, so let me know how this sounds as I start it here. Uh, are you all ready? Let's, let's do this. Um, right now I have a volume. Ground or does it need to be quieter? Cause I, I think it might be cool to have just some like nice beats in the background. Let me know, comment if that music is too quiet, if it's too loud. Um, where's the Discord server? Um, I will be getting back to promoting that again. Um, I do have plans for it, I do. Uh, but right now it's completely dead for the most part, except for people just promoting themselves in like the self-promote tab. Um, once I revamp it, I will be telling you guys nonstop about it. <laughs> Don't worry, uh, cause I really do wanna build a solid 
Discord group for YouTubers, but also and maybe some of you guys out there I already have one person who can um, we bit loud. All right, let me. Uh, I'm gonna drop it to twelve. We'll see how that sounds. Um, but once I do revamp this, um, I, what I also need is mods. I need mods because last time I opened my Discord, someone went through and spammed like a hundred inappropriate photos in the chat, and I and Discord wouldn't let me delete them all or just ban all the guys' messages. I had to go through each individual photo out of like a hundred th photos that this guy sent and delete them all individually not to mention that all the people in the group had to like deal with all those notifications and things like that uh horrible so i need like proper mods and like people who can actually moderate the group um <laughs> professionally uh because i do want it to be like a professional group i don't want it to be um i don't know how to describe um i don't want hundreds of Roblox kids coming in and like spamming and then people just promoting themselves and not actually adding value. Um, and people just using it as a way to try and get views. Like, I don't want it to be that. I want it to be like a real group community that can, uh, um, you know, be together and help each other. Uh, so I need to figure out what that looks like. I want to implement things where maybe we have like weekly events in the discord group where it's like, Hey, we can, uh, every week we'll do like thumbnail reviews or every week we'll watch a YouTube video together on YouTube growth and discuss it together or, or, or something like that. Um, so I am going to get the discord back up. Um, and also let me know about that music. If it's a little bit better now. Um, it shouldn't be as glitchy anymore because I am doing it inside of StreamYard. But now I have it volume 12. So hopefully that is a good background beat kind of thing. I think I think it just sets a vibe. And it's also just sets a vibe for me because it's just silent here. And I'm just blabbing for an hour. Uh, so it's kind of nice to have some beats that I can actually hear through my speakers and uh, enjoy myself as I sit here and hang out with you guys. Um, it was a wee bit loud. I did turn it down a bit. Hopefully, thumbs up there. Hopefully, that does that music is a little bit better there. Um, hey, what's up? We got Nebula, we got Louise, we got Seven. Uh, was it Truth Boy or Seven Ruth Boy? I'm gonna say Truth Boy. What is up? Um, Make a video how to do that with chats. Yes, I will be doing a uh, live streaming for beginners video coming up. It's on the idea list. I was going to post it this month, but then I got way too busy because now I have the cap cut course. I've got a few videos. I got at least four videos coming out for the rest of the month for sure. Um, so actually five, I have five videos that are going to be coming out this month still. And we're already on the six. Uh, so and the cap cut course. So once that's all done, um, probably in May, I'll be releasing the live streaming for beginners video and I'll cover, uh, I use StreamYard. If you want to check them out? Links in the description. You can actually create a free account and start live streaming for free um, and be able to pull up the comments and everything. You'll just have like a watermark in the corner, which isn't a big deal. Um, but yeah, you can use the free one. I'm on the pro plan or they're like their highest tier one. Uh, because you can do a multi-cam setup, which I will be doing soon. I've got a identical camera of the one I already use, which is a Sony a7C. Um, and in my videos, I'm going to have multi-cam set up. And hopefully, once I figure out the technical side of it, I might do double cameras, uh, which their professional plan allows. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, as a new YouTuber, can you please do a tutorial on how to make a good thumbnail? Uh, yeah, I've actually got a few videos already up on the channel. Um, so if you actually go to, if you click on my channel page, right at the top is a YouTube for beginners playlist. One, I have an entire two hour course that I was charging money for and have now made free on the channel. Um, in there, I show how to make thumbnails as well as best practices for thumbnails. So you learn how to make them and how to make them correctly. 
Um, and then also in there, in that same playlist, there's another video where it's like 10 thumbnail mistakes beginners make. And I also cover some other things to avoid. So um, there's both a tutorial in Canva for free. And I also have a Photoshop tutorial that I've posted on the channel as well, which is like 45 minutes. And I show you exactly how I make my thumbnails like identical. <laughs> like I literally make a thumbnail and I just screen recorded it and talked through my process in Photoshop. Um, so whichever one you have, Photoshop, or if you're on a free budget, Canva, both, I've got two, two videos on that for sure. Um, so yeah, definitely check those out. Um, and then hopefully in the future here, I am going to be trying to make thumbnail templates. Um, so a whole bunch of different thumbnail backgrounds that, uh, you guys can just download and then be able to use in either Canva or even CapCut. Um, I'm re-exploring making thumbnails in CapCut as well, because I did do a video on that. It got over 100,000 views. Um, and so for some people, it might just be easier to make a thumbnail in CapCut versus Canva or something like that, because a lot of you guys are already used to the tools and adding text and removing the background from a photo is free in there. Uh, so there could be a lot of benefits to just making it inside of CapCut. So, um, but there is stuff out there right now that I have on the channel. Luis, I am doing good. Um, we got uh, Jewel Media in here. What is up? Nice to see you. Um, your videos are helpful. You are welcome. Uh, happy to help. Um, um, why cap cut banned in Nepal? Um, probably for the same reasons India banned it uh, or why the U.S. is potentially banning it. I think they're going to ban it, in my opinion. Um, but that's probably why. Um, is it's just a security threat um, where China has the ability to potentially either alter the algorithm to manipulate uh, a country or multiple countries, um, just like they were able to ma manipulate multiple people with saying, "Are the app? They're passing the bill to ban the app when they're not passing a bill to ban the app." um and then told people to call congress like that was a perfect example of them using the app to use the american people to get something that benefits them um when, I, when actually the bill doesn't ban it, it just forces them to sell it even if they can't sell it because the chinese government won't let them it doesn't technically ban them um it, it's for the exact same reason why they want it banned is because <laughs> china is a problem um so i think a lot of i think once the u.s passes it I think a lot of people are going to, a lot of other countries are going to get on the bandwagon and ban it, if not already, uh, which it seems like Nepal might have already done it. Um, we always get into the cap cut banning discussion on on the live stream for some reason, um, but yeah, I, I, I do think it'll, I do think it's going to go, um, and I also think cap cut's going to go as, um, yeah, cap cut's going to go, TikTok's going to go, um, all bite dance stuff. I think will will disappear unless they um are sold um which i don't think china's gonna let them be sold um but yeah uh but but i do have hope there is potentially hope that cap cut on desktop might stay around potentially um because only cap cut mobile has really the social side and the tiktok side of it i haven't seen that on the desktop version so maybe that'll stick around. Maybe we'll at least get CapCut desktop. I'm not sure. Um, but then again, India has CapCut desktop banned. So I feel like we would take the same actions as India has already done. If they banned CapCut and TikTok, it wouldn't make sense for the US not to do that if India's already done that. I don't know. I feel like they'd be following the same courses as India. Um, all right. That's probably enough of that on the cap cut ban and, and things like that. But I do think it's going to happen, even though it may not be on the floor yet of the Senate. Um, it'll eventually get there, I think. Um, do you ever think you'll make a course for photography and editing for beginners? Um, I'm never going to make a photography course. At least I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to ever merge into photography um i'm now more merging into the monetization side of things and helping creators make money from their youtube and turn uh their passions and using youtube and turning those into side hustles that's where i'm kind of merging into um i'm not as passionate about photography as i used to be um so i don't see that um i am releasing a course on editing 
uh, probably within the next month here. So stay tuned for that. It will be free. Um, I'll let you. I'll keep you guys updated. Um, um, <laughs> this is an interesting comment. You you doing CapCut for mobile made me love editing, and I never was into this kind of stuff. Now I don't want to. Now I don't want to start learning. You made me enjoy learning. Awesome. Thank you, Hugo. I'm glad you enjoy. Uh, you're having fun with CapCut. Like, yeah, I mean, even though I take it pretty seriously on this channel and I do teach people to take it seriously, it, it doesn't have to be that too. Like, in my spare time, I will make funny videos. Uh, I, I, I can't post them here because of copyright claims, but I do edit and use a lot of the keyframes and masking different things uh, to just make fun videos because it's just fun to do or just to something comedic to show friend like friends and family. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It doesn't always have to be like, you know, you don't have to be like this uh, master editor per se, but you can have a lot of fun and it makes it easy. Gap makes it easy. Um, make an editing course on DaVinci Resolve. I'll re eventually get to the the the, 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 the DaVinci Resolve side. Um, I was debating whether I should make the free course on DaVinci Re with DaVinci Resolve or CapCut. But since CapCut's free and will work on a lot more computers than DaVinci, uh, I'm probably going to keep it CapCut for now. Uh, but I will probably do like a DaVinci tutorial or cover some things within DaVinci uh, eventually. Um, it's just a really tricky software to learn. It's, uh, it's such a steep learning curve. So even for me to learn it and then teach all of you is quite a big step. Um, and then also there is already a, a ton of YouTube content on DaVinci Resolve out there. But... I'm still going to learn it eventually. I'm going to know all the editors. I'm gonna, I already know Final Cut Pro. I know Premiere Pro. I obviously know CapCut. I got to tackle DaVinci. Um, and who knows? Maybe I'll morph to that. But probably not because, as I said in a previous video, um, I have now a Premiere Pro plugin called FireCut uh, and have been using that <laughs> with every one of my videos to save me like so much time in editing. Um, so I don't know if I'll, I'll get off Premiere Pro now because I have that. Um, I just want to learn, learn so much from your videos, especially keyframes. Awesome. Super glad. Um, and then as I go through these, if you do have questions on YouTube, just comment like question or Q and then write your question out. Helps me see it, uh, in the chat. Um, and we'll keep going on here. Um, let's see. As a new YouTuber, what's the best video editor? Um, depends what you're editing on. Um, CapCut's probably going to be a good place to start um, for a beginner. It's going to teach you a lot of the basics of editing. Um, and then I would probably move into one of the bigger softwares like Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, or Final Cut Pro. Um, those all can do a lot and have a lot of professional features. Um, Though Premiere is most likely going to get AI video generation where you can literally like make enhancements to your video with AI. Um, so I would probably go the Premiere Pro route versus Final Cut Pro. Um, Final Cut Pro is easier to learn. And also, if you need help with anything, you can call up Apple and Apple will teach you Final Cut Pro. So you can call them up on the phone and they'll actually connect to your computer. And if you can't figure something out, they'll actually show you how to do it, uh, which was super useful for me with learning the software. Um, and that's always nice if you counter like an error or a glitch or you're trying to make a certain effect. You, you have someone on dial who can show you. Um, uh, and then DaVinci is kind of nice because it's free and you just pay once if you want the pro version and then you own it and you don't have to pay again and then you get all the features um whereas premiere pro you're on a subscription and stuff like that um but i also use photoshop for making thumbnails so it just makes sense to have like the whole adobe suite um but yeah that's what i do CapCut's probably a pretty good place to start especially with all the feature it, features it has you're going to understand keyframes already a bit about masking um the basics of trimming stuff together adding layers um but it's difficult to edit a whole long form video in CapCut. i will say compared to the other editors they have a much better timeline premiere pro davinci resolve final cut they have great timelines and that might not make sense but it's like everything stays hooked and together 
So like in CapCut, if you've already added text and music and things and you make a trim, the elements don't move with the clips as you delete something. They stay back. So only the clips move, but the text and the other things don't. And so it's like awkward and you got to rearrange everything if you make a trim after you add music and text and different things, uh, which is a real pain. The other editors don't have that. Um, so that'd be my thoughts. Um, I hit 900 subs last night. Congrats. You have 100 more to get the big 1,000. Uh, and getting the first thousand is definitely one of the harder parts. Um, I use UCut, but I'm thinking of, of switching the editing software. Um, I'm pretty sure UCut is actually owned by InShot, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't made a UCut tutorial. I probably should. Um, um, I do think CapCut is better than UCut, but then again, I feel like the best editor too is the one you're comfortable with. Um, if you're uh, a really good editor in a basic software that knows it can do a lot of different effects and can edit things quicker than, you know, throwing yourself into DaVinci Resolve and not knowing things. Uh, it's going to take you a lot longer and you might not be as good at it. Um, but if you can, yeah, I would try to merge to CapCut. I may have like 30 plus tutorials <laughs> that can show you everything. Um, let's see. Um... Where do we go if CapCut is, if they ban CapCut, what do you recommend? We'll see when we get there. Um, there's VN, there's InShot, which are on the free side. I still recommend LumaFusion on the paid side because they have a really good timeline for a mobile editor. Um, if you're on computer, it's gonna be to go to DaVinci Resolve, I would think. Um, don't go to Filmora, I know, <laughs> because uh, they canceled their uh, viewer, uh, their subscribers' lifetime licenses, and uh, I wouldn't trust them um, personally. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll definitely make the video as we approach that, because um, obviously people are all going to be searching for that at the same time. So um, yeah, uh, let's see. Questions, questions. Question. Can I use my natural voice for gameplay commentary if I do not have a microphone for the time being? Sure. Yeah. Um, if you don't have a microphone in your gaming and let me know if you're gaming on your phone um, or if you are gaming on like an Xbox or something like that. I don't know if you can capture your own audio from Xbox. Like if you just want to use your phone as your microphone, like you can go to your phone and you can search like, what is it? Uh, it's not recorder. It's like voice memos, voice memos. You can, um, oh, it's not cool like it used to be, but inside the voice memos app on your phone, uh, or you can do, easily just download a voice recorder. You just literally just record the audio as you play the game. Uh, or if you have a screen recorder, you could technically record the audio too, but I would recommend getting headphones with a microphone on them. Uh, so that way it's not picking up the game while you're also talking through. Cause like the microphone's right by the speaker. So the speaker's blaring your game and the microphone's picking that up and your voice. It's going to sound bad, but if you put headphones on, you can hear the game. The microphone's there on the, the, uh, the what do you want to call them earphones or headphones um to pick up your voice so you can hear the game so it'll capture the gameplay and your and your voice um it is a mobile phone yeah so that's what i would do so i'd literally get airpods or plug headphones in that have a microphone um and then do the proper screen recording where you can capture audio and the video um <laughs> my headphones don't have a mic yeah you gotta get ones with a mic uh, which I think they're like 20 bucks, uh, at like Walmart or, or something like that. But yeah, if you do that, you'll be able to capture it all. Um, yeah, and that'll, and that'll work. Um, and yeah, until you can, like, that's what you'll have to do. Um, I think Mr. Beast was filming on his phone, uh, well into a uh, hundred K subscribers. Um, and then eventually bought a camera. So like, you just work with what he had is what you got to do. Uh, when I got started on YouTube. My most popular CapCut tutorial is filmed on the cheapest iPhone. I think the 2.5 million 
cap cut video was filmed on this and through this camera. I didn't even use the back camera. I used a front facing camera on this old iPhone SE um, back in the day. So I think it was actually not even full HD. So just this rinky dink iPhone here is what I filmed by how to edit in cap cut video and advanced editing tips. I just set it up, talked to my phone. Um, <laughs> that was it. Um, and then um, 2.5 million views later and 1.7 or 1.6 million views later, like I worked with what I had and eventually I got more money and I could afford fancy camera and fancy camera too. Um, so yeah, just work with what you got, man. You can do, totally do it. Um, but at least you're getting started and you're going to learn those skills. And I think that's so important. I don't know if people watched my YouTube advice video. Uh, but like the main thing is just practice, start learning the skills. Um, even if it is like a rough start, start getting failures, start making mistakes. So that way you can learn from those mistakes and do better. Um, so you got to practice with thumbnail design and make some really bad thumbnails. You can go back to my old videos. I made really bad thumbnails. Uh, I try and listen to an entire video of me from my old videos. I was just rewatching some of those more recently and I was going to like freak out because I would talk like this and it would literally be this slow it's like, oh my word, Colin, just talk like a regular person. Like no person talks like that to another person. No person will communicate to another person like this. And so it, it just felt really unnatural. But it's also, I had to learn to be on camera. Like, sure, I'd been doing YouTube since 2014. Uh, but still, I had to learn how to just pee normal on camera and talk. Like, even though I don't talk like this loud and... Um, I don't know what you want to call this voice. Like if I was just to have a conversation with you, it'd probably be more like this. This is probably my more natural voice that I talk in. Um, if I was just talking and we were like just in a room together, but because I'm on YouTube, I am projecting my voice. That's probably the right word projecting. And so I had to learn that I had to learn how to be, have some more energy in my voice. So I wasn't like, tired and drowsy and just talking like a normal person like it took time and so i had to learn those skills and the best way to learn those skills was by making crappy videos that sucked so in making bad thumbnails making bad titles uh filming with bad lighting and then i started to improve i started to okay i'm going to try and make my lights a bit better um like i was hitting up like a white sheet and shining a big light on the white sheet so I'd get soft light on my face and doing all these different things and thinking about my background and thinking about how I present on camera and learning how to write good scripts. Like I didn't take a scripting class to, to learn YouTube scripting. Like I taught myself, uh, I taught myself how to make good hooks, um, taught myself editing, how to make my edits look good studying other creators and learning okay how did they do that what made this so good why was this intro so amazing like doing all those different things like you have to take the time to, to practice the skills learn the skills and the best way to start is now and not when you have fancy gear um and that's my long rant there <laughs> but uh just get started is, is all i'm saying and get better you're gonna use these skills in the future uh, the creator economy is only getting bigger. Um, and it's going to be way more traditional to have uh, a role of people being influencers, selling products. Um, yeah. So it, it is something you're going to use. You're, you're never going to not use those, those skills you learn. Um, but yeah, my lawn rent. <laughs> um, Question, I know you use Epidemic Sound for music and sound so you don't get copyrighted, but my question is, on YouTube videos, is there a place where you get to see if they're copyrighted or not for use? Um, so the easiest way to do that, uh, great question, is when you upload a video, it'll actually do a check on your video. Um, there isn't, you can't, fit, I don't know if there's really a way to see if it's copyrighted uh, without uploading first and seeing the results. And then sometimes even those results are not final. 
Um, I have videos from years ago that all of a sudden, poof, just get a copyright claim because they finally figured out I was using this song, uh, the software did. Um, so that's the only way I really know to test it is by just uploading the video and seeing the results from YouTube and hopefully those results are final. Um, probably the easiest way is just to make sure that you are using copyright free music. It doesn't have to be Epidemic Sound, even though I do recommend it. Um, like YouTube has their own creator music that you can upload. Like that would probably be the safest way is to go through YouTube studio and go through YouTube zone music. Um, and sometimes there's guidelines where it's like, you have to put in the description, uh, a shout out to this creator. You have to copy and paste the name of the song, the artist and a link, and then you're allowed to use it in your video. Um, so even something like that might be worth exploring too but that that's the way i, I uh i've done that what software are you use for recording in hd um so for live streaming right now i'm using Streamyard, and that is in full hd um but you do need the 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 top plan to stream in full hd with Streamyard, which i have uh so using that um you could also use OBS. I think that'd be a free option. You could probably get away with full HD through OBS. I don't think OBS charges you anything, um, but it is a learning curve and a little more like uh, harder to learn uh, and get set up versus StreamYard's very simple and easy for beginners. Um, but you just have to watch a few tutorials on OBS. Um, but yeah, and then I'm guessing that's what you're talking about. Because, yeah, I, my, my camera shoots in 1080p. Um, Praveen! It's been so long. Nice to see you. Uh, and I'll, hello, Aspen. Thanks for hopping in. Welcome to the live stream. Uh, okay, I'm going to be lame. I'm going to ask again. What do you guys think of the music? Is it cool? Does it set a vibe? I right now have it at volume 12. Does it need to go up a little bit more? Does it need to go down? I'm probably just going to rewatch the live stream and see how it sounds anyway, but I'm trying to dial it in um, and also just get your guys' thoughts on it. Um, I like hearing the lo-fi beats come from my speakers as I'm chatting here. It does give me more of a vibe here, but this is the last time I'll ask. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just trying out a new thing, and I feel like it kind of is kind of cool because most live streams are just straight talking i feel like having just something else going on in the background like music or something would be uh nice um question how can i make my video like a pro in samsung galaxy tab a um all right everyone says just right on volume it's good i like the music awesome all right 12 is the magic number then for for volume um, but back to the question here, how do I make video like a pro in the Samsung Galaxy Tab A? Um, just do the best you can. Um, like if you're filming with your Galaxy Tab, uh, get really good lighting, probably be by a window on a cloudy day. It's probably going to get you some good lighting for your video. Um, edit with whatever you can and upload. Um, one of these days I'm going to do some challenge videos where I'm stuck filming with like a 99 cent camera. Uh, or something like that. Um, I have that. I have that here. I just have to go through and make the video. Probably sometime in spring, summer, I might try and do that. Um, but yeah, it's just this, just the same thing. You got to film. You got to edit, upload, um, and yeah, just learn the skills until you can get off the Galaxy Tab A, I guess. Um, uh, can you make a more detailed video on doing reaction videos on CapCut Mobile? Yes, I can, Hugo. That is on my list. Um, again, once I'm done with this cap cut course, um, but it will be free for everyone. Um, I will be pumping out a lot more cap cut videos over on uh, the Colin Michael Edits channel um, where I can upload as many editing videos and things I want over there. So that it will be coming out. It is on my list. I already have it written down. I want to cover it. Um, so hopefully soon. You are ignoring my comment. I, blah, 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 ah, it took, you posted at 1128. This is one minute later. Janet, I can't get to your question. Um, that fast. 
<laughs> I'm trying to go through an order here. Um, I'm about all the way back at 11.29 a.m. and it's 11.39. So uh, I'm 10 minutes behind when you drop a question. I am trying to catch up, though, with um, time here. Uh, I managed to get 510 subs. Awesome. Uh, congrats. Um, I think you should do more tutorials about Canva editing. Um, I could try and do that. I'm, the reason I only did one video for now is I really don't like Canva's video editor. <laughs> to be honest, I saw people were interested in learning how to edit videos in Canva. So I made that video. Again, if you want to grow on YouTube, make videos that are in demand. So I made a Canva tutorial. It got views, but it's a really bad editor. I would recommend avoiding it <laughs> if possible and go to something else that's properly designed. I think Canva added the video editing aspect because they're trying to be the all in one, you know, creator tool, but they're doing too much. Um, it's a really bad editor. Um, but if that video continues to get views, maybe I'll make some more content, share some more tips in, in Canva video editing. Um, oh my word. Oh my word. If you don't reply to my comment, I'm going to unsubscribe to you. Do it, Janet. Do it. There, You have no privilege in this comment section. Goodness gracious. Goodness me. If, uh, don't threaten me with unsubscribing. Oh my gosh. Send a super chat and I will get to your question right away. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Am I being mean? I hope I'm not being. I hope, I hope I'm not coming across mean. But goodness, you don't do that in a comment section. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> uh, okay, how do I make good thumbnails that will make my viewers click? Um, I do have some really great videos already out on making thumbnails. If you go to my channel's page and then to that top playlist there, YouTube for Beginners, I've got some great thumbnail videos in there and a YouTube course that's free. Uh, but just some tips for making really good thumbnails that I can share right now. Um, you, it just has to be simple and easy to understand. And then de depending on the video, it has to either show the value that'll be in the video or provoke people to curiosity to where they want to click on the video to see um, what's going to happen. Um, so it doesn't necessarily need to be like, I have to be a Photoshop e expert. I need to add all these fancy elements in like some of the best thumbnails on YouTube are just simple and easy to understand. Um, so just making it, um, like you, if you're going to use text, make it white or black text and bold text. So it's easy to read even on like a small phone. Um, using colors is can be important um and just being straight to the point um not using tons of text like if you guys have a whole sentence on there no one's going to read that only like three to four words uh it does help if you do show your face usually people like to connect with faces or if you post lots of content when people see your face again you know it's one of your videos like i use my face in every single video so if i pop up on your home page you know it's me it's not just some random person on cap cut or talking on YouTube, it's me and can get people to click. Um, and yeah, it's uh, and, and another tip too with thumbnails, look at your competitors. Um, look at people in your own niche and how they're making thumbnails because that's ultimately gonna matter. Like these are like basic rules, but they can be broken and they can be broken depending what your niche is. Um, like the way I make thumbnails, I'm looking at my competitors. I'm looking at Think Media and how they make thumbnails. Uh, I'm looking at like Primal Video. I'm looking at like a lot of these other uh, YouTubers who make content similar to me because different thumbnails resonate with different viewers. Um, like the way Minecraft thumbnails are made are completely different than mine. Uh, and so a lot of the things that I would do as an education channel are different than like a Minecraft entertainment channel. Um, so usually the best instructor is seeing how people who are making content similar to you are making thumbnails and then try to recreate them yourself. Not that you'll upload those, we're not, we're not going to completely steal people's ideas, but we do want to learn how they make thumbnails. How do I get that background they used? How do I make my thumbnail look like theirs? How do I get that text that they used? Um, how did, how did they make, you know, how did they pose themselves in front of the camera, um, to get that effect? Uh, how did they edit their face? 
uh, you know, go through all those different things, learn all those different things, teach yourself those exact same skills so you can replicate what's working in your niche. Um, and then you can obviously add your own twist to it and your own style to it, but you're learning those fundamental skills that are already working with that audience. Um, and usually viewers will click on, you know, those different niches will all have the, the same kind of style of thumbnail. Um, and you can add your own twist to it, but still remaining in that niche. Um, so hopefully that, that, that is helpful. Um, let's see. Um, OBS is good. Um, I'm trying to catch up here. Uh, what is a good editing tool? I use CapCut. I don't use the Pro. How can I make them better? Um, CapCut's probably the best route to go, I would think, for um, editing. Um, there's so many tutorials. Like, I have so many. Um, I know uh, there's tons of other CapCut creators out there who are sharing great things that you can do in CapCut. So definitely check those, those people out as well. Um, uh, with making your videos better, like I don't, I don't use pro just, just so everyone knows. I know sometimes I get comments where people are like, are you using the pro version? Like, I don't know if I have access to that. I don't know if I can make that effect. I don't use CapCut pro. I do not pay for CapCut pro. Um, I'm only using the free version. Um, so if you, um, yeah, I would stick with that, learn those different things. And then maybe what you could do, um, once you know the fundamentals and stuff like adding text and everything like that, um, transitions, look at other creators with whoever you're making content. And again, looking at your competitors and try to recreate some of their editing styles. So maybe they have like a, a screen slide on and then text appears on screen, like figure out, okay, how do I recreate that? How could I make that? Uh, for example, um, uh, there one YouTuber I watched more recent, recently, um, April Lynn, who made some videos on YouTube growth. Uh, I loved her editing style. It was amazing. She had great B-roll. It was awesome. And so one of the things she did was she would slide on like a, a black screen or something like that or some less background and then would have this typing effect for text. And so it actually type on screen and there'd be the sound effect of typing. And it'd be usually if she's going to make a point. And I was like, wow, that's a really cool effect. I like that. Let me see if I can recreate that myself. So I learned, I figured out like what would be a good background. Uh, I went to Envato Elements and found like this text typing effect that I could use. I went to Epidemic Sound and found a sound effect for typing and I was able to recreate that effect. I didn't know how she made it. I had to figure it out. Um, but everyone's got different stuff. Like, I don't know what your niche is. Uh, whereas you know, like mine's education. Some people are in beauty. Some people are in gaming. So it's like figuring out what that is, that style you're trying to recreate. And then once you know kind of everything that you can use, transitions and text and stickers and things like that, you can kind of play around and try to figure out how they made it. Um, because CapCut has a lot of the same tools that like Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro have. Um, the only fancy effects would be something like After Effects. If they like got the text to hold still while the camera's moving around is like an after effects thing or oftentimes where text is behind someone is like an after effects thing. It can be done in cap cut, uh, but it, you know, it's more along the lines of like advanced masking or things like that. There are limitations to cap cut, but the majority of the, the basic editing things that people do can be done with cap cut. They're just using transitions or using text uh, stickers and then also sound effects to make it, and music to make it all like immersive and, and, and seem really good, um, which hopefully I'll get deep into. Like I filmed an entire video and I'm gonna edit an entire YouTube video in CapCut and show you exactly how it would do things. And I have it hopefully recorded in a way where I get to demonstrate everything. So I'll be able to do like a reaction video example and also having things slide on screen and the text effects and switching the B-roll and switching to a screen where text appears on screen and all those different things. Um, so the whole entire process of making a really good YouTube video 
packed into one like mini course uh which i think is gonna be pretty awesome um um hello i want to be a video editor but i don't have a pc i learned some skills in ipad can you tell any tips yeah you could totally edit videos for people if you want to be a video editor just from your ipad 100 percent um you can just use CapCut if you want um what i would do is go and create an upwork page uh let me just type it in real quick and i'm, I'm right now at comments from 11 41 a.m um, so I'm like nine minutes behind here, but I just typed Upwork into the chat. Um, if you go to that website, it's like a freelance site. Um, once you set up your account and get approved and everything, um, you can start applying for jobs, uh, on there, different freelance jobs. The hardest part is getting like your first few, um, was it your first few, uh, customers just so you get some reviews on your profile. Uh, I know for my Upwork profile, I just did some miscellaneous tasks like, I'll confess here. Someone had a thing where they're like, we'll pay you $10 if you sign up for a Webull account uh, through this link. And clearly it was them abusing an affiliate program, 100%. Um, so they had me set up this Webull account and add $1 to my account. And then poof, um, they paid me 10 bucks. They gave me a five-star review. And I had at least a review on my channel. So I wasn't just a nobody. And then that made it easier to apply to different jobs on Upwork. So there's plenty of editing jobs. There's people looking for long-term work. There's people just looking for a quick project of like, can you just add some music to this video? I'll pay you 20 bucks. Poof, you can just take that, that task and start earning money that way. Um, if you do want to be a video editor. Also YouTube jobs, there's like youtubejobs.co or something like that, um, where there's a whole bunch of different creators looking for editors and thumbnail designers and different things like that. So, um, and yeah, just practice. Probably a good way to practice is to, once you've learned all the basics, just go and start editing for other people. Um, even if you're not so crazy about the money, then just do it for practice. You know, earn extra five or 10 bucks and learn how to do something for someone. Um, yeah, I, I think that would be, that'd be my advice. Um, <laughs> if you ignore this comment, you'll have to unsubscribe from your channel. Yes. I don't have to unsubscribe from my own channel. Um, cause I do have multiple channels subscribed. It's how I got, got this far. <laughs> um, does Colin do one to one? great question oh my word you're making me sell myself um so if you do actually go to my link in bio uh so click on my channel page go to colinmichael.bio it's right on the page there i do offer one-on-one -on -one consultations um right now on sale so if you want to check that out if you want my time and want me to do give you a channel review if you want to just pick my brain uh if you want help figuring out a strategy and a plan for actually growing your YouTube channel strategy for making money from your channel. Uh, feel free to check that out again, link in the bio. So just click the channel page, click on colinmichael.bio. You'll see it on that page. Uh, but yes, I do offer one-on-one. -on -one. There's my, there's my pitch for, for the live stream. <laughs> um, uh, question. Have you taught color grading yet? Yes. Uh, I did a video like three to four months ago on cap cut color grading. So if you go to my videos and scroll down a bit, you'll you'll see that there. Um, I'm scrolling ahead. I'm uh, looking for some questions here. Uh, if you got any final questions, we got like seven minutes left. I'm catching up to the front of the chat now. Um, we'll drop them down below. And also for everyone here, just so you know, YouTube channel reviews is happening in two weeks for our next live stream so on april 20th april 20th will be youtube channel reviews um they are selected at random uh so you join in you submit your channel if you are here early and we do that channel submission um chances are there'll be less people in that pool of you know that i'm gonna randomly pick out of so you probably have a higher chance of getting picked um and yeah we'll be doing youtube channel reviews april 20th same time, 11 a.m. Central time, uh, my time. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. We'll be doing that. I know you guys love channel reviews, so that'll be happening. 
Uh, question. I have a video that is appealing to the wrong audience, and I have a video that appealed to the right audience and has 18K because of this. Do you have any thoughts on this? Um, is Does the wrong video have the 18,000 views or the right video? It sounds like the right video has 18,000 views. Uh, but either way, either way, um, YouTube only looks at videos on a video by video basis. Um, so let's just say it is that the wrong video is getting all the views. If the wrong video is getting tons of views, YouTube's just not going to recommend some of your more recent content if they are not interested in that topic. Um, so it's not going to negatively impact your channel. So for example, even though I have the Colin Michael edits channel, and that's primarily where all my CapCut tutorials are going to be for now, it's not going to negatively affect me that I'm getting all these views from CapCut tutorials. Um, because if they're only interested in CapCut and not YouTube growth, YouTube's just not going to show them those videos. But if those people watch and they are interested in YouTube videos, well, then YouTube's going to recommend them, um, depending on if that video is actually good or not. Um, so you don't have to worry about like a bad video wrecking your channel that doesn't appeal to your audience. Um, it's a video by video basis. The only thing would be if someone goes to your video list and they see some videos that don't appeal to them, you know, that might be a negative, but, um, either way, you should be fine. That bad video shouldn't be affecting your, if it's not, if that video is not made for your, your current audience and it's on there, it's probably not the, the end of the world. Um, so I would, I would, I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Um, but also that you got 18 K views, uh, that's really good. Um, and yeah, sometimes, Hey, if it's growing your channel, it's getting you subs and watch time. Why not? Uh, if it gets you monetized and then you can just make videos for, you know, whatever audience you're trying to reach, that's totally fine too. <laughs> um, can you name a better editing app than CapCut? LumaFusion. Easy. I love LumaFusion. You pay $30 once you own it. Super solid editor. Doesn't have a lot of the trendy effects in it. Um, but for like professional editing, if I was going to edit a YouTube video on my phone or on my iPad, I would edit in LumaFusion, not CapCut. There's my controversial statement from my CapCut fans. Um, let's see. Question when filming, do you recommend doing it? Uh, one go or chunks? Um, I've normally done it all together. The only one I didn't do uh, all at once was the 40 cap cut editing tips video, like the cap cut mastery where I shared 40 editing tips. I filmed 20 tips, stopped, and then filmed the other 20 tips another day because uh, that was just too massive of a video. Uh, but normally I will sit down in front of the camera, record the whole video and do it. Um, I actually do have to record B-roll for one of my videos. I forgot to do that the other day. And so I brought like the same shirt to work today so I can film some B-roll shots for when I was filming this video. Um, but normally I film it all at once, not necessarily in chunks. Um, um, Colin is legit. I've been playing with B-roll myself and learning a few tricks on my own. My second channel is where I'm playing with it more. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Cool hand 85. Awesome. Um, let's see. Whole lot shorts every day or once a week, whenever you feel like it. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not going to impact the algorithm at all to your benefit or to your, uh, negative, negatively, uh, just post when you can, uh, and when you're ready to post. Um, but obviously the more you practice, the better. Um, so if you post a short every day and you're not just posting because you want to post, like you're not just posting cause, oh man, I have to post, but you're actually learning and you're learning content creation and you're working on making a better hook to keep people watching the short and different things like that. Um, then it's worth it. Otherwise, if you're not learning a lot by posting a short once a day uh, and you're not improving your videos day by day, then I do once a week. Um, question, how do hashtags help in uploading a YouTube video? Uh, they don't. Um, so hashtags are good at organizing content. Um, so if you're doing like a certain series, do like the hashtag, whatever your series is called, then people can click on that hashtag and see all the videos with that hashtag. Um, so they can kind of see all of your 
uh, content, no one searches hashtags on YouTube. Um, so they're, they're pretty useless um, other than organization. Um, and that's what YouTube says too. It's for, for organizing. Same with shorts as well. Um, uh, yeah, DaVinci Resolve is on iPad. Um, it, it is pretty decent on iPad. Uh, I did do a tutorial once on it. Um, but yeah, and I guess actually technically Final Cut Pro is on iPad as well. Um, I know Final Cut Pro is a subscription. I think DaVinci Resolve is free for the most part. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know. I still like LumaFusion though. Like it's LumaFusion's easier. Maybe maybe one day I'll learn the DaVinci Resolve iPad and start editing on that more. Uh, but I do believe DaVinci on a computer is different from DaVinci on an iPad. So there are some features missing there, if I'm not mistaken. Um, my son told me about DaVinci a whole year ago, and I'm noticing it's a great tool to get into. You're the third person to tell me about it, so I'm on it now. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, DaVinci, DaVinci, DaVinci. Um, I'll eventually get to DaVinci <laughs> at some point. Go check out uh, Daniel Battelle. Check out Daniel Battelle. He has a lot of great videos on DaVinci Resolve. He's kind of moved from into that area. Um, until I get content out, it'd be a good one to check. And we're at the hour, but let me still get some final questions here. Thanks for the CapCut tutorials. You're welcome. Hello, uh, Kate. Um, hi, Colin. How do you purchase Pro and CapCut? There should be some kind of button. Uh, or if you add any of the Pro effects and try to export, it'll force you to try and buy the Pro version. So... Um, but keep in mind, I don't have it, but if you do want it, you see things in there on the pro version that you want to use, go for it. Um, haven't played with color grading yet. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Color grading is fun. Color grading is, uh, especially if you get into DaVinci Resolve, I'm pretty sure DaVinci Resolve has the most advanced color grading, uh, effects, I guess you could say, or elements, uh, out of any editor, if I'm. Uh, not mistaken. <laughs> DaVinci is so cool, but so complex. Yes. Very complex. Um, looking forward to channel review. Yes. Uh, that is happening two weeks from now, April 20th. Um, how do you make 4K quality videos? You have to film in 4K or screen record in 4K. Um, so 4K is the resolution that the videos have to be in in order to upload at 4K. Um, Let's see. Um, oh my gosh. I need more mods. <laughs> uh, I got to make some of my more uh, regular live stream people um, moderators. Um, who, who, who's up for the challenge? Because um, we need to put user in timeout. Goodbye, uh, Bonham Gaming. Um, you do not need your spamming. As a matter of fact, we're just going to hide you from the channel. Uh, there's no place for that. Um, all right. Who, who's up for... Who, who's in here regularly? Who, who wants like a, a, a mod badge? I know NCage can be a mod. I'm gonna make him a standard moderator. There you go. You know, I don't think NCage is in here super often, but uh, I do know him. Um, so that's allowed. Um, I know everyone's gonna say me, but I'm looking for people who I, I see on a regular uh, basis. <laughs> um, I'm trying to look at names that I might know. Um, um, it is a lot of work. It is. Um, yeah, I'll have to figure out that side of things a bit more. Um, yeah, I'll have to make a few different iterations there and figure out how that's going to work. Goodness gracious. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> I gotta figure out some YouTube settings or something. Um, all right, we are over. I probably need to go here. My tummy has been rumbling. It is lunchtime here. Um, but I will, again, we'll, we'll have YouTube channel reviews uh, coming up on April 20th. Make sure to show up. Hopefully we can get into your channel and help you grow more effectively. Um, I could probably make a part two on how to edit like Mr. Beast. I'll add that in there. Um, and I'll see you guys later. Adios. See you April 20th.